If you want to remain at the top of the boxing world for over 17 years, you have two choices. Be a machine, impervious to both damage and pain, or become a good defender. When you think of Manny Pacquiao, the first things that come to mind are his hand speed and his power. But defense has long been a mainstay of his, and it's partially what's allowed him to remain a threat to these young guns, even now as he approaches 43 years of age. But what is it that makes Pacquiao's defense better than expected? He's not standing in place with his hands down making guys miss, or looking flashy doing the shoulder roll, so what gives? I'll tell you what gives, simplicity. The real start of Manny Pacquiao's never-ending party came in 2003, when he upset one of the top three pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world, Marco Antonio Barrera. Pacquiao blitzed through the skilled Mexican by flooding him with offense. Barrera mounted attacks and landed his zero shots, but Pacquiao showed flashes of defense before backing the Mexican up again. The fight ended in the 11th round, and Pacquiao's non-stop punching had left him unmarked. His fight with Juan Manuel Marquez, a few months later, would prove much different. In their first meeting, of what would end up being a quadrilogy, Pacquiao got off to a fast start again, dropping Marquez three times in the first round. Miraculously, Marquez mounted a rally and managed to squeeze out a controversial draw. In that fight, Pacquiao showed his deficiencies as he allowed Marquez to gain the momentum. Here, Pacquiao attempted to use his foot speed and guard to evade or block shots, but he allowed Marquez to catch him with clean blows. Part of that had to do with Pacquiao being too jittery and tense, which allowed Marquez to excessively back him up. Things got worse for Pacquiao a year later as he lost to Eric Morales. Pacquiao did well catching Morales with combinations, but the Mexican managed to time him with the cleaner shots and route to a unanimous decision win. Again, Whenever Morales attacked, Pacquiao would appear unhinged, wasting unnecessary energy in the process. It was in 2006 where the core of the Pacquiao we now know became molded. He rematched Morales and showed an array of improvements, such as an extended use of his lead hand. He also worked the body, but more importantly, he improved his defense. He was more composed and evaded shots a different number of ways. Since then, Pacquiao relies on the basics to keep him out of trouble. His first line of defense combines a high guard plus a little footwork to take the sting away from the shots. He can also parry on the move. Look at how he parries the shot with the side of his palm, as opposed to the palm itself. This keeps his hand at the angle, ready to block hooks. Canelo Alvarez is another initiate of the side palm, but Pacquiao can also parry the classic way. Look at how Pacquiao tucks his chin in as his opponent closes the distance. Tucking the chin also helps in case the punch gets behind the guard. Here, the chin ends up getting hidden behind the shoulder. Like Errol Spence, Pacquiao uses an active guard. He moves the arms just enough to deflect shots and to keep himself covered. The high guard also allows him to keep his hands ready for any misdirection. See how Thurman keeps him guessing? but still Pacquiao manages to block the right hand. And just when his opponent thinks that Pacquiao will stay on the defensive, he explodes out of the guard. And as always, he can keep his opponent turning after punching. And just for good measure, he can also slip shots or weave under them. And even though his guard might seem a tad bit high at times, he can always bring those elbows down just in time to block them, a benefit of experience plus good reflexes. He can also transition from his attack back to defense. Then he can put the guard, pairing, head movement, relaxation and offense together. The problem is that he tends to be inconsistent with his defense, especially when his opponents are on the defensive. This tends to lull his focus and causes him to drop his hands. And because he's shorter than most opponents, he tends to overreach, which leaves him open to counters. Spence is taller and has longer reach, so if he decides to keep Pacquiao away, he could cause him to overcommit and exploit the counters. And though his guard is better than in 2003, Pacquiao still keeps his guard way too high sometimes, which leaves him open to body shots.
He also can't afford to remain still, because a power puncher like Spence will target the back of the guard. So fellas, tell us what we got right, what we got wrong. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one. Take it easy, folks. Thanks for watching.